in compliance with Chapter 231 of the Public Law 1975 and by the Open Public Meetings Act. As the notice of this meeting has been provided, please be seated, please, and be quiet while we begin the meeting now. As been provided as specified in the Act, proper notice of this meeting was provided in the notice of April 28, 2010. Said notice was posted at the entrance of the Board of Education offices in Elton and on the Suns, so however, the Lord Treasury and Herald of the News and the Nutley Journal. Nailed to Nutley Township Clerk, advertised the Nutley Sun on May 6, 2010, and posted on the district website. This is the official meeting. Please rise for the moment of silence and advice of the
shortfall of $2.2 million. We look at comparison from 2010, 2011 to 2011 and 12. In our operating budget, that has increased by 1.295 million. Grants and entitlements increased slightly by 40 there is a very slight decrease in the debt service, and the total increase in our budget is 1.34. Below that are our revenue sources, our revenues, you know, local sources of revenue. Um, we have a, an increase of about 377,000 this year. State and federal grants of about 20,000, and then the local tax levy. <coughs>
Our food service operation is going to be taken over by Charcoal's. That will alleviate the board from making a contribution, which, which the current year has been $100,000. I know slight decreases in reduction for equipment and the assessment from the state for our past grants that we received for uh, construction costs. Now comes the portion of the meeting where we allow members of the public to address the board. This section will allow questions or comments on the budget only. Will the board regulations allow 20 minutes for these uh, communications? Each person shall be in the three minutes to answer the state of the industry. Speak with these people at once. After all, those wishing to be heard about the capital All said, you will be directed to me as a chairperson, and no one can address the board members of the division. On them. Okay. Uh, Terry Quirk, 45 hands in place, spokesperson for the Nelda Parent Advocacy Network. Um, I have some questions. Uh, does this budget include a full time director of special services? Yes, it does. All right. And does this include a contracted therapy service that we have now or include our own people? There is no additions to district OTP. 
But will you be keeping the therapy service that you have now? I don't believe that decision has been made yet as to who should provide the um, in terms of the 11 teachers, uh, I'm a little confused. Is that going to be at the high school level? Throughout the district. Throughout the district. Throughout the district. Okay. Throughout the district. Okay. Uh, some are through attrition of three elementary teachers. Uh, the numbers indicate that uh, three uh, elementary teachers will be in excess. So three of the 11 right there is through attrition. Okay. Those numbers being down. And when it refers to other teachers, are they supplemental teachers, like basic skills? Is that? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, when they uh, other yes. teachers? Uh, in, in, the, in the content area, high school, middle school, content area, high school, middle school, we get two elementary language positions. Okay. Um, I'm just a little concerned about the 11 teachers being. I know. I know that you're going to try to do everything in terms of student teacher ratio, but I just the 11 teachers from, it, that would be at the high school level. I'm just a little concerned that the classrooms will be, classes will be a little high. When, when we're, we're looking at the, the, the teacher student ratio of high school, we feel that uh, taking, yeah, the middle school, taking into consideration the budget constraints, working with the principals in both buildings and the uh, subject area coordinators, we feel that we can uh, tweak this and still meet the students' needs without having a negative impact. Um, our offerings are one of those us. Okay, so will we know exactly where the reductions will be in terms of the teachers? Will we? Right now, that is something that we're working on. We've actually compiled a list of every teacher in the district, their date of hire, their tenure date, what certifications they hold, what positions they held in the district, so that we can uh, look at this according to statute Secretarial staff. I was just. Are those um, are those part time staff or is that full time or? Those are six secretaries throughout the district, and uh, we are looking at consolidating and uh, reassigning <coughs> to uh, the, the needs of the schools as they run, okay. and, and certainly honor the fact that we have a two percent gap in the schools. Is there any one like a part time level that could be reduced or? We will be in the next few weeks looking at everything as far as how we can systematically uh, mm -hmm. meet this goal and have the least disruption to the school, okay. to the schools, I should say. Good evening, Mr. President. Alan Thomas, 108 McKinley Street. Mr. President, um, after hearing Mr. Zara's response to uh, Ms. Quirk's question, I'm, I'm still not clear on how we're going to reduce 11 teachers if maintain the same program and having no impact on class size. To me, this is a matter of you know, mathematics. Are we agreed that we're not increasing class size? Are we having fewer students in the school? This is the Thomas, uh, again, out of the 11, Three are teachers that will be, uh, their positions will be eliminated because of a decline in elementary enrollment. Those are three. Two world language teachers at the elementary level, we feel that we can deliver language at the elementary level uh, without having those teachers in the elementary school. And again, these are recommendations that come from our elementary principals, our administrators. So that leaves us with six at high school, middle school. We're looking at enrollment in certain classes. We're looking at the role uh, of the administrators, coordinators of instruction number of places they teach. There's a lot of factors, but we're primarily with the, with the exclusion of the elementary, uh, world language, and classroom teachers. That leaves us with six in high school, middle school, in, in many different content areas, history, English, math, science, world language, uh, phys ed, business. So I, I believe that we can do that. And uh, <coughs> we really don't have all that much of a choice in what we working with everybody to make sure that we minimize the impact. Thank you, Mr. Zara. The way I understand your answer is that some classes might have a smaller enrollment now, they're not going to have a larger enrollment. Is yes, that and some people's teaching load may change. 
Thank you, sir. Brother, I have a question. Go ahead, continue. Charles Walls is going to take over completely. What does that mean? That was a pretty rather than the gym. Are we laying off our we currently, we currently have some staff that are board vet employees and others who are charcoal charcoal employees. Charcoal will be taking over the entire operation. So, so we're laying off them. our cafeteria workers. They will be offered positions with charcoal, and some of them have other options. Um, some of them are eligible to retire. So there's a lot of different things. And we're continuing to work on that and work with those employees to just to determine where we can. The minimum would probably be $75 per student. And, per student. Uh, and it could go as high as maybe to $150. The board hasn't made those decisions yet, or it may be tiered based upon the um, activity that the student participates in. Well, that's what I was wondering, because certainly some activities cost more to the district to operate than others. It would be a shame to have. The transit club has minimal expenses, you know, we charge as much as the marching band, which has more significant expenses. But uh, I realize that's a touchy subject and we have more work to do on that. What do you anticipate having that finalized? Or, or if you 
you're asking me that question personally? Sure, you're, you're the president. We have to write first, first, the first thing. The first thing I'm concerned with the staff. That's the first thing. Well, that's what I'm asking. First, first and foremost, whatever staff we can bring back, we bring back the staff. Uh, are we talking about any other teams or any other people back to this? There is a hundred thousand dollar reduction in the total athletic budget. Which teams may be eliminated has yet to be decided. So it's been decided they're going to eliminate the teams. They're going to have to make some eliminations in order to come to that hundred thousand dollar number. Again, Mr. President, my question is: When do you anticipate those decisions? I'm sorry, Mrs. Quirk, I'll just be a minute. Uh, Beverly Avenue, 301 Hillside Avenue. I am a retired uh, librarian here. I was always very proud to work for the Hunt School System. I'm looking at your line about media and library, and I see there's a slight cut here, about $29,000, and it says offset, offset by staff reduction, and I'm wondering what that staff reduction is. At this time, we are envisioning the reduction of one library among the five elementary schools. And the other four librarians working with the elementary principals have developed a schedule that will cover all of those needed periods. So all four of 
of the elementary library? We have four librarians covering five schools. They will all four be traveling? Uh, no. Uh, we, will, we will determine what the rotation is. Um, and that, again, is, is to be decided. Uh, in looking at critical staff reductions, we are trying to minimize the impact in any one area. So um, several school librarians we will reduce that down to six. As Mr. Riley said, as he stated, if in fact we have retirements or any unanticipated uh, change in our <coughs> income stream, we would bring that librarian staff before we did anything else. I just I think it's unfortunate because when Dr. Padol was here, we worked very hard to get a librarian in every school. And being from Indian school, I know that I had a very full schedule there. So I would hope that the scheduling and the enrollment of each school would be taken into account. Absolutely. We, we don't make these decisions without a great deal of thought and uh, a great deal of consideration. We spend an incredible amount of time weighing the pros and cons and trying to look at what are we missing, what may we uh, encounter down the road that we're not thinking about now. And yet, this is uh, something that we have to deliver to the county presented to the voters, we are telling the public as much as we can possibly tell them, this is what we know right now. You know perhaps in, in uh, April, May, the picture will change more positively, and uh, we can look at some of those positions and some of those reductions. And I don't believe any librarians are retiring, so would it be the last person hired probably would be the one? That's, that's uh, the way it would be. Okay, thank you. Terry Corn, 25 Hampton Place, spokesperson for the Nelly Parent Advocacy Network. Um, Mr. President, I have a very quick question. Um, several years ago, when we were in the middle of the construction, I believe that there was a position that was created to help the business administrator. I believe that Mr. DeVita um, had that position before he became the business administrator. Does that position still exist? Is like is, it was a, a person who was assisting the business administrator, and they were basically doing the um, all the construction. Yeah, that, honest, honestly, that sorry. honestly that goes way before Mike and Vita. Mm -hmm. uh, there's always been a, in a senior accountant, so to speak, that uh, falls under the purview of the business administrator. And yes, we still maintain that position. Okay, and you still need that position? Is that what you said? That had nothing to do with construction, by the way. That's as long as I've been working for that team before the construction, before the science when we signed that person. What do you say? I think Mr. O'Black at the time. But I believe he was the business administrator. Oh, he later became the business administrator. Prior to that, he was under uh, John St. Cagley, who at the time was the acting business administrator. Okay. Okay. Anyone else for Yes, Mr. Thomas. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm sorry. Um, the, there was a significant in decrease in the administration line item. Is that because of the uh, uh, layoff of six secretaries? Or is there another position on the administration? Yes. Uh, we are conditioning the, the reduction of one administrator and the consolidation of uh, two positions into one. Do you know what those are?
administrative assistant who says annual salary is $93,906. I'm wondering what, what that person's job title, or what that job description is, so it warrants $93,000. I say that in the context that, you know, in some cases of administrative assistant, we call it the glorified secretary. I don't want to mean any administrative assistants out there when I say that because I know they do a valuable job in many operations. I just don't know what it is here. There are two individuals with that title in the district. One works directly for the superintendent and one for myself. Both of which have been in the district for a very long time and are basically our right and left hands. So they're not just secretaries, but they really are administrators. Yes. And there's also and the one, if you'll allow me, the, the assistant to the superintendent really has assumed dual roles because we never uh, replaced the secretary with the assistant superintendent. So she's, she's, uh, she's undertaking the role of at least an administrator and a half, if not two, executive administrative uh, positions simultaneously. That's what I thought, Mr. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, there's also the position of rental manager slash reports coordinator at seven, just about 76,000. Can you tell me a little bit more about that person's job description? <laughs> yes, they are primarily responsible for coordinating the rental and usage of all school facilities, as well as handling all the state reports, such as the application for the state school aid, the full certification report, um, the
not have a copy of the solar energy question that's about to go uh, before the public. Uh, I believe we have some up here. And, uh, we have a presentation tonight because over the last uh, few weeks since we uh, alerted the public to the fact that we were going to move this as a second question in uh, the April election, there's been some concerns from the citizens. Uh, justified concerns, honest concerns, and uh, hopefully we can uh, lay those concerns with this presentation. So this should give you a uh, solid overview of how this board came to the unanimous decision to move this question forward, uh, move the district forward with technology and safety. Thank you. Good job. Okay, so we've been to several uh, PTO meetings around town. We've been outside of schools. We've been at the shop right. We've talked to staff members and the public about this, this question. And um, we're going to go over right now the pros and cons and the reasons why uh, the board, who after their due diligence, um, spoke to members of public service, bond council, our architectural firm, and uh, the municipality of Bayonne, whose school district uh, board secretary just retired after 30 years and has eight years experience with uh, solar technology in his district. He was the first district to put solar panels in his schools. And last year, uh, he realized a $1.6 million benefit to his district. That was $1.6 million in one year because he put solar technology eight years ago when most people said it's not the right time. All right, so first of all, the, the easy pros, obviously there's a lot of pros to solar technology. First and foremost would be no pollution. Uh, solar power does not release carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxide, nor mercury into the atmosphere. It does not burn fuel and generates no emission. Obviously it saves you money because your electric bills go down day one. Less consumption because it requires no fuel, you will save money on the cost of fuel. Solar renewable energy credits. We'll spend a little time here because this is really where the rubber hits the road. This is the main revenue source for the next 15 years if this question is approved on April 27th of where the money's going to come from, not only to pay for the solar panels and the installation of same, but computers in all of the schools, uh, cameras and safety equipment at the middle school, which currently does not exist, swipe card access in that school, and uh, new stairwells in many of the facilities, and including this one. And e even though they're probably not in any danger if you go outside the cafeteria right here down the hall before you leave, you can probably look at that stairwell and say, it's probably not gonna fall down, but that's probably what we said about the Yanapal school ceiling a couple of years ago. It doesn't look like it's going to fall down, but as Albert Stano once said, God forbid. We don't want to be in that position again two, three, five years from now because we said it looks okay today. Okay, so solar renewable energy credits or SRECs. One SREC is generated for each 1,000 kilowatt hour. These SRECs are traded through New Jersey Clean Energy Program to power companies as a credit for producing clean energy. 
is the current escrow value, as the uh, VA from Bayonne said a few weeks ago, he's been to three meetings, by the way, and reinforced this position and, and empirical data on this information. $650 today for one escrow. We are projecting, as this is going to be paid off in 10 years, an escrow value of $440. So we intentionally used an ultra-conservative number as a payoff factor so nobody would come to the microphone and say, why are you using 650? That's the value of today. Seven years ago, it was $300. Nearly maintenance-free. Uh, the VA from Bayonne said he spent less than $800 in eight years for maintenance in his uh, district. Uh, this program would have a 25-year warranty on the panels and installation. Sustainable and renewable. Fossil fuels such as coal, oil, and natural gas are non-renewable. And they're also dwindling. Solar energy will never run out. We hear all the time, how long is the oil going to last? How long is the natural gas going to last? Noise factor. Panels are silent, they have no moving parts, there's no noise, there's no generator, there's no fuel, there's no motor, it's quiet. Next. Additional pros. Zero dependence on foreign oil. I guess we're all kind of familiar with the disruption that we have globally today. From Libya to Japan, to Russia, to Europe, to Mexico, everywhere where there's oil, there's disruption right now. Sudan, Saudi Arabia, this is where we get our fuel from. How long are we going to do this? Solar is one of the cleanest forms of energy. Okay, so not just for the district, not just for nothing, not just for technology. How about for the world? How about for the planet? How about for the globe? Utilities must, must purchase 20% of their power from clean energy sources by the year 2020. They currently buy less than 2%. So is there a good time or a bad time? Is it a good economy, a bad economy? Right now, we're at the ground floor of the evolution of solar in the state of New Jersey, who's the second only behind California in leading the way of solar technology in the United States. Nuclear energy is failing. Obviously, you only have to cite three, three critical times in our history, from Three Mile Island to Chernobyl, and now, after the tsunami and the earthquake in Japan, what that's cost the world, and billions of dollars to clean up, cost many lives, and obviously has a tremendous negative impact for the environment. That radiation has already found its way to the shores of California. You've also probably heard that Germany has completely shut down their nuclear program while it's reassessed. So in our opinion, Nuclear, nuclear energy will fade because of safety concerns, creating even a greater demand for solar energy in the very near future. We'll create a new source of revenue. This is desperately needed to support the future of our students' needs for technology, which are not able to be funded from our capital budget. We will also fund future technology for years to come as well as safety and security needs. We've been talking and talking and talking for at least 10 years now. And unfortunately, Mr. Mascaratol is not with us tonight. But in 2000, that Board of Education started looking at referendum and capital improvements to this district. And one of the first things they said was, where are we going to get the money from? We don't have the money. We can't get it from capital budget. You can't just load in $2 million or a $1 million or half a million dollars in a budget, as you just saw us, we're cutting personnel, which we don't want to do. We're cutting cafeteria workers who have been here for 20 years, which we don't want to do. Where's the money going to come from? Here's a simple solution of where you can get the money from for pennies a day. Okay, new roofs. We just put new roofs on every school in this district. The taxpayers fully funded 100% through referendum, through bonding. Some technology, some roofs, some windows, some facades, and some heating systems. When is the best time to put solar 
on your roof after you put a new roof on your house or your building. This is the perfect time to do solar. Next. Okay, what are the cons? Obviously, you can't avoid the negatives, but, you know, when you put on a piece of paper and you draw a line down the middle, what are the pros, what are the cons? Here's the cons. Outlay of capital, definitely. There's an outlay of capital, no question about it. But there's revenue generated from that capital investment. Timing, where's the economic times? Not a really good time, would we all agree? Would we all agree that unemployment is horrible? Taxes are through the roof? Nobody wants to do this now, but we can't not do it. Roof conditions, as I just described, old roofs would need to be replaced prior to solar installation. We don't have that negative component before us because we have brand new roofs. Besides having brand new roofs, we had uh, our structural engineers look at our existing roofs to make sure they can handle solar panels on each roof. Alignment towards the sun and obstructions, we have none. The alignment is perfect. We have zero obstructions on all of our buildings. So we will realize the maximum revenue generation from these solar panels. Next. Okay, so what are our conclusions? And again, this is a few minutes on something that this board has discussed for a long, long time. We need to begin to rid ourselves of foreign oil dependency. That's obvious. We desperately need additional sources of revenue with the new budget restrictions we face as a district. By the way, if anybody sitting here thinks that that's going away, or that's going to improve over the next year, two, five, ten, think again. If it's not gonna get better, it's probably gonna get worse. As years go by, we're gonna need more revenue. Budgets are gonna get tighter. Power purchase agreements only make sense for the capital investor. They reap 100% of the ESRIC values which would fund our technology and then some for the next 25 years. We would only save on the electric component. The ESRECs last for 15 years and then the solar panels will last for 25 years or more. Okay, so let's spend a minute here because this is a large bone of contention. Power purchase agreement is where a third party capital investor comes in and funds the project. They come in, they buy the panels, they pay for the installation, and why do they do that? They do that for one reason and one reason only. It's called the ROI. It's the return on the investment. That's why they're called capital investors. Because they know at the end of the day, at the end of 10 years, 15 years, 25 years, they're gonna reap millions of dollars in revenue and profits for their companies. We decided as a board not to go that direction. We could have easily done it. We could have just said, you know what? Let's just do a PPA. Let's do a power purchase agreement. Let's put the solar up and let's save $100,000 a year in electric. But this board looked at it differently. We said, well, okay, so we save money in electric every year. That's great. $100,000 a year is nothing to sneeze at. At the end of 25 years, it's a major league number. But how are we gonna pay for computers? How are we going to pay for repairs that still need to be done? How are we going to pay for the, for the uh, cameras in the middle school that we couldn't fund because we had to reduce the number on the referendum from the middle school to $125 million because when the estimates came in from the contractors, it was over the amount that the public voted to fund. We still need these things that have to be done. We can't avoid it. For 100 years, words that came before this one left things for others. And because they left things for others, 10 years ago, we were talking about an $80 million referendum. That if we put aside $200,000 or $300,000 a year back when we could, that would have funded those improvements. But we didn't. We didn't put any capital dollars aside. So because of that, we went from a $80 million referendum question to what was called baby steps. Let's do baby steps first. That's what we heard back then. So let's do a $5 million referendum for the science labs at the high school. Well, we did that. And then that baby step turned into a $25 million giant step for the middle school. And I think we're all happy with that project. That step turned into a $38 million referendum, which was desperately needed 
as facades were falling off, Lincoln School bricks were falling, windows were falling out. Does anybody remember the gym at Spring Garden School, what that looked like before we took the walls down and built a new gym? It wasn't very pretty. And I tell you today that if we do baby steps and do we do a power purchase agreement, because what will happen if this, if this question fails, the next board will move forward with a power purchase agreement. And you know what's going to happen? In five years from now, the computers that we have today are going to be antiquated. We're not going to be able to fund them. And everybody's going to say, as to that, we probably should have moved that question forward. We probably should have voted yes for that. That's the risk that we take if we don't do this. If we do not support the solar initiative now in five years, as I just said, we won't be able to fund it. And what happens, obviously, is then we have to move another question forward in five years to pay for the technology that we can't afford. And then you, the taxpayers, will pay 100% of that burden. So instead of going with a program that pays for itself, and then some, over 25 years, I guarantee you, and I'll be back here in five years, I promise you, that this fails. And I will be back here telling people, I told you so. Because it's true, this is what's gonna happen. For only $29 per household over the next 10 years, we can have state-of-the-art technology for all our schools. Right now, if you go through all the schools, you have the haves and have-nots. Some classes have computers, some classes don't have computers. Some, some uh, labs have more computers than other labs. This uh, high school is in desperate need for computers, smart boards, and the same. This guarantees a state-of-the-art technology for the next five years. And, and the uh, safety component that we spoke of earlier. We have, again, as I said earlier, we have brand new roofs and they're structurally sound, so it's a perfect time to move. With net metering, the meter will run backwards in the summer. That's how you generate the savings on your electric. We actually will produce more energy than we're using, and because of that, public service has a program called net metering where the meter actually runs backwards and you get a credit for your energy. That's where the savings comes from. That's how it's developed. Next. Final conclusions. Fact. This project is the single greatest source of additional revenue in the history of the Nutley School District. There's never been a project like this proposed that would generate this kind of revenue, and I guarantee you there never will be ever again. Second fact. The revenue generated from the solar initiative will pay for itself, unlike any other program ever presented to the public to vote on. And fact three, it is anticipated that the solar panels will generate over $10 million over the life of the panels. Next. With the proposed conservative projections over the anticipated 25-year life cycle of the solar panels, the system will generate the following numbers. And this is based, again, remember what I said earlier in time. Currently, the SREC value is $650. We reduced that number down to $440 when we came up with a payoff structure and timeline. So just imagine what these numbers would look like if they're either maintained at $650 or anywhere near it, or the value of an SREC as I anticipate because of what's going on with nuclear and energy and oil. I believe the SRECs will rise as they have over the last five years. $6,494,000 from SREX in the first 15 years. $1.9 million from net metering in the first 15 years. $1.3 million from net metering for the next 10 years. And $9.7 million over the minimum 25 year lifespan. And again, I want to say this again, as I said two weeks ago, because it's worth repeating. That's at a $440 SREX value. And that's at $129,000 annual savings on electric. I was told today by a public service that they anticipate that electric will continue to rise. But that number is not going to go down. Electric costs are going to go up. So as they go up, so will our anticipated savings go up. As, as the need for green energy continues, the extra value will continue to rise. 
So get, get 33% of those numbers that you see in front of you. And then tell me if this isn't a program worth funding for $29 a year to the average household in the town of New Jersey. Anyone has questions, please feel free to come Uh, 
a, a very interesting uh, event. Warren Wright, who is a technology teacher at the middle school, was the winner of the 2011 Innovative Technology Indicator Award sponsored by the Edison Venture Fund. The award recognizes the innovative practice, leadership, and dedication to the field of technology education, for which she is a technology teacher. Warren spent the unit plan uh, about hydroelectricity in the Great Falls of Patterson, New Jersey, in resume, essay, and a five-minute video about the project. John H. Martinson, Jr. of the Edison Venture Fund will present the unrestricted cash award of $10,000 to Laura at the New Jersey Technology Education Association Celebration of Excellence in Med. Congratulations to Laura, congratulations to you. Regarding bullying, the clergy council of nothing, made up of clergy of all the churches and synagogues of nothing, were concerned and wanted to know what they could do regarding addressing and uh, reducing and someday eliminating bullying. And uh, they're going to address it uh, regarding their parishioners and uh, in uh, the home and how bullying is handled. And, and uh, we're going to form a partnership with them. And uh, we, we appreciate your reinforcement of the message. On the 24th, uh, as you know, Governor uh, Christie was in at the town meeting, and he did in mention before. And uh, we know that uh, if, in fact, anything is mentioned, we've already mentioned before, it will cause people with the years into consider uh, retirement. So that's something that we're watching very closely for a great many reasons. On the 25th, I attended the superintendent's round table, and uh, very much, uh, uh, as we're discussing here, the seeking funding, budgets, Technology, bullying, all of the issues that we're discussing here. On the 31st, I attended the uh, bullying seminar with Mr. Capella uh, the uh, middle school student assistance coordinator, who uh, we approved, this board approved the last meeting as the district anti bullying coordinator. And he is starting to work with our principals to build anti bullying teams in every school. On the 5th, is the annual JC's award, and Michelle Christantello, teacher of Radical School, who's here this evening, has been selected.
um, the approval of the corrective action plan for the monitoring report, AARA. Yes. On Schedule F, under number five, it says the district must maintain a record of any and all meetings with parents. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Schedule F. Schedule F, yes. On um, number five, the number district five. must maintain a record of any and all meetings with parents. Yes. I'm just trying to think, is that in terms of, let's say, if a, it's a behavioral situation or is it an IRS type of, is it any meeting that is? Any meeting with parents, I have to understand in terms of any meeting that, that falls under uh, any uh, issue with Title I or adult funding uh, has to be documented. Okay. So would that mean a referral type of, like those IRS meetings? Sure. That, that would? Okay. Okay, very good. And, um, under uh, business administrative <coughs> resolution on page eight, number 11. I just want to know the um, auxiliary services. I mean, could you just describe what is the Essex County Educational Service Commission and what do they do for us? Resolution number 11 is uh, the auxiliary services that are provide services for the non-public schools. Mm -hmm. The money that they receive from the state, the money is filtered through the district, okay. um, but it is for services for their students, for examinations, uh, initial and annual examinations, for speech, okay. uh, transportation, if that was applicable, for home instruction services. So those are not the kids that go to other schools, is that what you're saying? Like Non-public schools in Nutley. In Nutley, so parochial. And the auxiliary services you're saying that speech and medical, is that what you Yes, so those were the auxiliary services. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. President. I want to comment. Just on that point, uh, I will look at the contract. There is no contract in vision on uh, how many periods of day that you have uh, in, uh, for teachers to report. So we want to make it mandatory to put up the contract. Um, anyway, my next, my real question is to the administrator of uh, the contract. Uh, I thank Mr. Pizzago uh, for uh, giving uh, uh, that summary. I'm wondering if there are there any. Uh, or the springing uh, provisions of the contract. For example, the legislature now has the proposal, the governor's proposal, as well as the Senate Majority Leader's proposal for uh, statutorily setting uh, in, uh, public employee contributions to the health benefit plan as a percentage of the cost as well as the percentage of the salary. I'm wondering if and it would, of course, be uh, you know, and, uh, and provisions such that any existing contract would not be affected. 
affected by that. Uh, when we, we have an extremely provision in our contract that says the school district will not be saddled with a three-year contract uh, when the state law will afford us the same amount of money. I guess I can tell you without our attorney being here to go over it. Uh, we did discuss that issue, and uh, I believe the wording in that affidavit of the contract re reads uh, based upon the law, what's, what's required by the law. So if the law was to change, and we'll go behind that, but I believe we discussed that it may have an effect on the contract. So if there is a new something implemented where it decides to become 25%, and it's and uh, don't go because I'd have to really check with our attorney and we can make a word of mind. But we did discuss something on the matter. Do you think it wise that the board approved the contract now so you get that clarification? Um, I don't think we can take this up for a matter of executive, but I, I think we were uh, comfortable with it. Even if the result is no, but. Yeah, I still believe we're comfortable with the contract. Seeing now, Mr. Kaczynski, did you move superintendent resolutions? Uh, yes, sir, Mr. President. One through, hold on one second, please. One through, four, uh, one through 13 is listed as well. I move the uh, superintendent's resolution of one through 13 as prepared. Second. Thank you, Mr. Kopta. Discussion? Call roll, please. Yes. Yes.
comments uh, that we've heard at the board meeting previous uh, to this, so we anticipated uh, a new superintendent to be voted upon before election day. Would we'll that go forward with that? Uh, those negotiations are ongoing. We uh, just interviewed a few more people the other day, and we uh, continue the search. It's ongoing right now. Do you anticipate calling a special meeting of the board before election day to appoint a superintendent? Really, that, that's not a fair question. It's really hard to say. We seem to be calling special meetings every couple of days. So, I mean, if uh, events unfold and there's a requirement for that, we'll have that meeting. But as of right now, I don't see that on the horizon. I will call a special meeting if the Department of Education uh, approved the referendum. Uh, we, we have to do that. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Anyone else wish to be around the school later? Any old business? Mr. Yes. Sorry, you have a question earlier? Um, in your discussion of the uh, solar energy situation, I think you left out an important point, and that being that um, interest rates at this point are probably the lowest they've been in years. I don't think they're going to get any lower. Of course, this is just my opinion and the opinion of many others. If anything, they're going to go higher on um, municipal bonds. So if you're going to get involved with solar energy, Low bonds for seven million dollars. Now is the time to do it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Great point, Mr. Rogers. Yes, I too would like to weigh in on the solar energy, solar panel issue. When I first heard of this concept, I was perhaps one of the ones that was somewhat concerned about the timing of all this. I did my homework, did some research, and concur with everything what the president of this board said. There's another element here, ladies and gentlemen. All of us on this board truly believe that the decisions we make, especially with regard to solar panels or any referendum involving millions of dollars, has to take into consideration the impact on our property tax payers. And as I thought about this solar panel issue, the energy issue, the technology issue, the referendum, I began to think, you know, when we think out of the box and we think long range, there may be an opportunity here that we may not get again to actually positively impact our property tax owners. Now, knowing that we cannot bind huge rewards, and we would never, I don't think any one on this board would ever suggest that, I had asked this board, and in principle we agreed, because again, I'll emphasize we can't bind huge rewards, I had asked that after we pay our bills on this referendum, the bonds, after we pay what has to be paid for the installation, etc., that when we begin to make money, that when we begin to reap revenue from this, this project, that that money is not earmarked for any future projects, but is earmarked to go directly back to the taxpayers. And it can be done if we add that money to future operating budgets and hopefully one day, instead of coming in with a $60 million budget or 10 years from now a $70 million budget, we come in with maybe a lower budget, 59, maybe 58. I think it can be done and the sincerity of my colleagues, if I may, is, 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 is astounding regarding property tax relief. We hear about it, folks. You hear about it my whole life. I've heard about how taxes are going to be reduced. I haven't seen my property tax bill get reduced ever. But at least with the money that maybe we reap from this program, we'll be able to give it back in some way, shape, or form. So that's one reason why I'm supporting it. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, just Yes, I'd like to emphasize one of the points you made in your presentations and that the solar we did have a presentation to the full board on the PPA, and upon questioning, it became clear that the investors are looking for a significant ROI. And for every dollar in the R, in the return to the investor, uh, they get it comes out of our pocket, in effect. And then if you look at the financial dynamics of this uh, uh, proposal of the referendum, uh, I think it's clear that we are going in a better direction. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Any new business? 
see them when we move to executive session. Whereas the Board of Education will be discussing matters of general and public discussion pursuant to NJSA 10 colon 4 12. And I therefore be resolved the Board of Education recess the close executive session at this time to discuss legal matters pertaining to TriTech Engineering and PCM Architecture and Engineering. We further resolve that the results of these discussions will be made public by inclusion of the agenda subcommittee of the Board of Education.